Arnold Sunga is the name. I work with the International Commission of Jurists as the Africa Director. Uh, Arnold, uh, attending this meeting, what is the one thing that you have picked from the discussions? The one thing I've picked from the discussions is that uh, the independence and accountability of the judiciary is so important as a public interest issue because with an independent and impartial judiciary, it's possible to have effective legal protection of human rights and it's also possible to ensure that disputes in society can be resolved fairly and impartially in a way that helps to bring about societal cohesion. So one of the concerns that has now arisen is that uh, there are increasing threats to judicial independence that need to be systematically addressed. And this conference was absolutely essential in bringing out the patterns of attacks to judiciary independence, but also the type of uh, uh, work and interventions that can be done to ensure that the judiciary is not only strengthened, but that attacks to judicial independence can be minimized. Thank you very much, Arnold. And um, moving forward, what is, it, what is the one thing or two things that you think Conrad and the ICG Africa can collaborate on to, to make a difference? I think one thing that we need to do is to help in creating an African mechanism so that there can be a proper institutionalized regional framework that systematically addresses the question of independence but also the threats to such independence of the judiciary. This is why I think Conrad and the ICJ must work to advocate for the African Commission on Human and People's Rights to establish a special rapporteur on independence of judges and lawyers in Africa. Thank you so much, Arnold, and uh, wishing you all the very Good best. Good morning, Peter. My name is Barry Abibata, and I'm a program officer with the Department of Political Affairs of the African Union, African Union Commission. Uh, coming to this uh, uh, forum, what is the one thing that you have learned? Well, uh, we are glad to be part of this forum, so thank you to CAS for inviting us. One of the things that we've learned is that there are some other organizations that are also working in the same area that are also helping Africa to promote the independence of justice. So I think that is a very good initiative and I got to learn a lot about it. I know that there are serious challenges and that we really need to have uh, very strong actions to, uh, to deal with them. Um, from the African Union perspective, what is it that you think uh, this uh, important body uh, can do to contribute towards addressing some of the challenges? We believe that uh, we believe in a continental initiative. So I believe that with CAS we can try to uh, have a plan, you know, to have a plan for the continent. This meeting is important, but it's for sub-Saharan regions. So we would like it to be more wider so that we can involve other countries and I think we can do a lot together. All right. Thank you very much Abibata and wishing you all the best with your work. My name is Don Dare, Donald. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Pan-African Lawyers Union. I also happen to chair the board of the Pan-African Citizens Network person and I'm also a member of the board of the African Court Coalition. Uh, coming to this forum, what is the one thing that stands out for you? The one thing that stands out for me more than any other is that after 60 plus years of independence, after close to 30 years from what we called the second liberation of Africa, which was supposed to usher in an era of constitutionalism, rule of law, human and people's rights, democracy and good governance, that we are still having challenges, especially the younger crop of better educated leaders, and here I'm talking of political leaders, economic leaders, social, cultural, and faith-based leaders of uh, not agreeing on basic concepts such as separation of powers and especially the independence of the judiciary. And that for many people, including lawyers, they still behave as though the judiciary is the third arm of government, when really it is one of the three arms of government. What part do you think uh, Palu can play in all this? I think it is important first to ensure that our courts at national level, uh, at regional level, at continental level and even globally are independent uh, and then that they operate 
uh, in a manner that is both effective as well as efficient. That means we hold judicial organs accountable and that would mean we also give them enough resources, human resources, technical resources, financial resources to do their work. And then I think we must also have an ongoing conversation with the citizens in the countries, in the regions, continentally, and so on, about the importance of the rule of law, and do practical things uh, to ensure the rule of law. From time to time, that may mean resorting to the courts themselves to litigate points of rule of law. Uh, but in other times, it will also mean just working with parliaments to ensure that we have good constitutions and good implementing laws for those constitutions, including for the judicial arm of government. Thank you so very much, Don. I wish you all the best. And uh, we hope that we can do something to bring about the change that we all desire. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Lilian Tibatemwa Echiri Kubenza. I'm uh, a justice of the Supreme Court of Uganda. And I've been at the judiciary for around four years. But before that, I was a professor of law at Makere University and also a deputy vice chancellor in charge of academic affairs. So I'm right now a judge at the Supreme Court. So we have an academia sitting on the bench. Uh, uh, Justice uh, Lillian, what is the one thing that has uh, stood out for you from this conference? Whenever we talk about the independence of the judiciary, and especially when we talk about independence of individual judicial officers, we tend to put a lot of focus on the appointment process. And one of the things, uh, or one of the points which is always brought out is the fact that the president of a country has a say in who becomes a judge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, that's a fact. Um, in Uganda, for example, and I know that it's a fact in many other jurisdictions. So whenever people talk about whether or not judges are capable of being independent, somebody will jump up and say, but how can they be independent when it is the president who appoints them? And of course, this is, I mean, within the context that usually when we talk about interfering with independence of the judiciary, we talk about the executive interfering with the independence of the judiciary. But the more I listen to this conversation about the role of uh, uh, the president of a nation, appointing judges, the more I realize that that is not really the issue. Yes, there are certain basics which must be in place in terms of checks and balances, but it is not because the president appoints a judge that makes them not independent. Because we've seen that in other nations across the world, the president has a say in who becomes a judge. But once the judge is at the bench, they've proved to be very independent. So for me, that is the question. It is not really because the president has appointed you, but you as an individual, it's a question of uh, personal integrity. You are there not because the president has done a favor, but the president found you worth going to the bench because of what the constitution already says because the constitution tells us who can be a judge and their mechanisms in any case for example in uganda the president comes in at the end you go and appear before the judicial service commission the judicial service commission sends your name to the president the president sends your name to parliament and then he signs the document but before even uh, appearing before the judicial service commission you are nominated so there are people who have already thought you are worth it. But when, so, so, so for me the question is, can we ensure that each stage of the process is actually independent of interference by whoever you think is going to interfere? For example, the people who are nominating you, the Judicial Service Commission, what, and then what kind of parliament do we have? Do we have a parliament which is capable of saying no to a name which has been sent? by the president. But I think to go back to the most important thing, the issue of a process is important. They must be basics mm -hmm. because that process itself is a checks and balance process. But thereafter, what do you do as a judge? 
So if I get you right, uh, uh, Judge, mm -hmm. I, you're talking about the process being important, mm -hmm. but, but I think uh, you're laying emphasis on the fact that the person mm -hmm. being picked mm -hmm. is equally important. That is the starting point mm -hmm. insofar as the independence of the judiciary is concerned. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. In any case, removal of a judge from that office is not a simple matter. So judges should be aware of that. Certainly we are aware of the fact that once you are at the bench, you cannot just be thrown out of the window, you know, in a minute or a moment. So it is the judge. So I think we should always say, who are we nominating? Those who nominate. Mm -hmm. The person you nominate, do you know them well enough? Mm -hmm. I do also believe that most of the people, perhaps all the people who are, uh, end up on the bench, are not questionable in terms of legal skills. They are competent mm -hmm. in knowledge of the law. Mm -hmm. But the issue is how do you use the law? You know, in any case, law is not mathematics. You know, but how do you use the law? What is the what pushes you towards a particular um, decision? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there hope for Africa insofar as independence of the judiciary is concerned? There is hope because we've seen very firm judges when it comes to that which is right in principle and i think we should also always remember that being independent does not necessarily being me the men going against the government all the time because even that is not independence anyway there is hope because we've seen many judges of character across africa but i think also the important thing is that the, you know do we have systems because if you have systems, then people will be able to do their job with independence and integrity. On that positive note, I want to say thank you very much, and I wish you all the best in your work. Okay, my name is John Seka. I am the former president of the Tanganyika Law Society, but I'm also representing the Sadek Lawyers Association, where I am in the executive committee. Um, so basically, you're representing the bar in this particular meeting? Yes. What is the one thing that stands out for you uh, from the proceedings of the, the meeting? Uh, we, we, we were exploring the issues of uh, independence of the judiciary and I, I think for me what, what, what is the take home is the fact that uh, we need as a bar to take some action uh, to assist the judiciary to sing its song, to explain the challenges that they are facing and how best can we help them to become more independent from the powers that be. Um, from the Sadak Lawyers uh, Association perspective, from the Tanganyika Lawyers, uh, uh, Tanganyika Law Society's perspective, do you think we are making any progress or are we retrogressing? And, and if we are, what are some of the major challenges? Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I, I think uh, the judiciary is doing a wonderful job because uh, uh, it, it is one of the arms of the government of the of the of the of the, of the, of the republic in any of, in one in any one, one of the uh, countries in the SADC jurisdiction so it is doing a wonderful job what is uh, is noticeably absent is the fact that uh, their independence is challenged by various factors uh, financial uh, challenges uh, be it uh, budgetary restrictions but also in terms of uh, meddling, uh, the executive meddling into the into the, the how they are they are operating, in terms of their, that sometimes some of the judgments that are issued are not implemented to the to the extent that they have been pronounced. So for me, that that is something that we need to uh, to make a change. We need to make. Uh, the judiciary as autonomous and independent as possible. Uh, how we do it, this is what we are trying to, uh, to come up with solutions. Uh, how best can we make the judiciary sing its song, but more importantly, how best can civil societies and other players and other stakeholders can help the judiciary achieve what it is constitutionally provided for. 
what role do you think the, uh, the bar can play in so far as the appointment of uh, people who serve on the bench is concerned? Because one of the issues that have been, has been raised is uh, the, this independence is compromised right at the appointment stage. What role do you think the bar can play in so far as improving this uh, uh, particular stage, important stage in the, in the uh, as far as independence of the judiciary is concerned? First of all, we, we think the bar uh, has to have, in, in those countries where it's not provided for, the bar has to have representatives in the, in the Judicial Services Commission. That, that, is, uh, that is one aspect. But then, uh, during the appointment stage, we as the bar would like and wish uh, the appointment to be more transparent, so that we know uh, from the beginning who is vying or who is aspiring to be a judge uh, as a bar because uh, if, if these people are either coming from the bar or uh, coming from the bench if we get to know them in advance we will get to see and and, and assist uh, the, the 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 nomination process by uh, vetting and suggesting or making references as to their characters to their integrity and make commentary where we notice that things or oh, this person is not suitable because uh, this person is a, a judge or a magistrate is a person who is going to determine rights and uh, to do that he has to be independent but more importantly he has to be a person of character a person of integrity so that uh, whatever that is decided is respected is cherished and everyone uh, once that decision is, is given, uh, the only option should be to only appeal to a level or to a person who has a more de decisive role, but not to think of a way uh, or, or alternative solutions like moving back to the, uh, to the executive to seek uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think we need to have a, a, a very independent uh, judiciary and to do that, the bar associations have a role to play in vetting these people, in suggesting uh, how best we can get the best candidates uh, for the judicial posts. Thank you very much, John, and uh, I wish you all the best, and the Sadak Law Association all the best, especially when it comes to uh, the troubles we're having with the Sadak Tribunal. And I hope that uh, your organization will continue working towards the instatement of that particular court.